president of WIFO says we are facing a new reality. Senator Anfrancé Martin thanks medical personnel for their exceptional engagement. But first up, Minister of Teat confirms winner's discontinuation of flights to Curaçao and Aruba. Those are the headlines for Tuesday, July the 14th, 2020. This is SSM Daily News. I am Valerie Van Putten. Thank you so much for joining me this evening. And as usual, we have a packed newscast, so let's get started. In our first story, Winair, our national airline, has informed its customers that effective today, July the 14th, 2020, it will discontinue its services to Curaçao and Aruba. This was confirmed by the representative of the company in Curaçao. The St. Martin Airlines cites the effects of COVID-19 crisis, which caused negative consequences on the regional population. Winair can no longer support flights to Aruba and Curaçao due to extremely low load factors on their aircraft, the airline announced. As Winair continues to move forward in the region, cognizant of the uncertainty in the historic markets remains a challenge. Winner announced that it will continue, however, to serve Seba, Stacia, St. Bart's, and Antigua from their hub in St. Martin. In these difficult times, Winner remains committed to working within the region to re-establish reliable, safe, and consistent service. Winner says that they thank its customers for their confidence and patronage and looks forward to serving them in the future. Meanwhile, communications coordinator for the CTO, the Caribbean Tourism Organization, Mr. Johnson John Rose, speaking to our Minister of Tourism today, Ms. Ludmila De Weaver, asked about winners' discontinuation of service. Initially, some miscommunication that happened with that, but they are open to us, uh, and we have winner traveling in between those islands. You know. It happened with, everyone got a little bit nervous when they heard that people were opening up to the US and uh, but that has been resolved and we are open to to Seba and Station via Winnier and uh, what I will add on to what you said in terms of the flights a big part of Winnier's base or their 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 customer pool is uh, who's coming from the North American market so America and Canada and they are transit passengers to the rest of the islands that uh, Winier uh, flies to. So if we don't have that chunk of uh, passengers coming in, that also puts a lot of pressure on our local airline, which is why uh, we are really limited in how long we can be closed for. Because it's a, you know, it has a domino effect down, down the board. So it's good, not only Winier, but it's to your tour operators, to your taxis, your hotels, your businesses, everything. And as was reported in yesterday's edition of SXM Daily News, in collaboration with the Department of Foreign Relations, the Ministry of Education, Culture, Youth and Sport, and the Ministry of Tourism, Economic Affairs, Traffic and Telecommunication, it has arranged a repatriation flight with Spirit Airlines for students and residents to return to St. Martin. The flight which is departing from Hollywood International Airport in Fort Lauderdale in Florida on Saturday upcoming July the 18th, is to arrive at the Princess Juliana International Airport at around 1.30 p.m. with 150 persons, including several students. The minister with responsibility for TEAT is the Honorable Ludmila De Weaver. Actually, it's a combination of students and uh, residents that need to come back home. And so far on our list, we had about 150 persons. So this is residents, whether they are expats or born on the island, or and students as well. So 150, 150 persons from throughout the U.S. that was going to all come back on that plane uh, on the 18th of July. And a special flight has been made available for those persons wishing to return? Yes. We were able to get the assistance of Spirit Airlines who travel here. You know, during regular times, uh, prior to COVID, they were here every Saturday, and they were available to offer us uh, the repatriation flight coming this Saturday. And uh, we were trying to do it with some other airlines, but, you know, all of their schedules are getting really busy right now, so which is why 
it didn't work out. So at least we have this first one, which we're very grateful for. Is it a charter flight for students, or will they have to pay their way through, Minister? They are. So the, they opened the website, uh, the spirit.com website for booking. And that was one of the questions that uh, we had, as well as the, the other ministries that really actually are involved and initiated this, which is um, from the Department of Foreign Affairs and the Ministry of Education, Culture, Youth, and Sports. So what the, one of the, the concerns was the fact that we would have to charge it again, but that was the fastest way for us to get that flight open. Uh, because as you know, and as the public knows, when you're dealing with uh, you know, any sort of uh, engagement from, in terms of government engaging a company, it takes a lot of time to go through the entire procedure. So that would have probably taken weeks, possibly months, uh, to, to get something like this done, which is why the fastest way that we could do it was, was through opening their spirit booking site. And what we did find out from the other airlines that uh, that come here, which is American or Delta or JetBlue or United, is that if anyone had any any tickets booked with them, they would be able to use their ticket credit towards a future purchase. Hmm. So it wouldn't they wouldn't necessarily lose it, and that's what you've seen with a lot of the airlines. They have been very um, considerate because everyone's going to the same thing around the world. Hmm. So the, the you know they didn't want to just cancel and said that you lost your tickets. They were actually allowing people to use their tickets with the other airline at a future date. A hundred and fifty persons will be coming in on the 18th. That's on Saturday. They will be coming from what area? What parts of the USA? Uh, they are coming from northeast, southeast, and Midwest. So they're coming, and, and maybe if uh, we ha I have not confirmed because today. I was waiting for an update to see if any of the students that were stuck in Canada are making their way to the U.S. to get on this flight. And I have not sat down yet with my staff to get that update, but I will shortly. They are, so the, one of the issues that happened is, you know, we abruptly had to close with two days' notice mm -hmm. uh, before our opening of July 1st because of the, the increase the significant increase in cases that happened in the U.S. the weekend prior to our opening date of July 1st. Mm -hmm. And as a result, persons had already taken their PR test and paper it. You know, they had already purchased tickets to come home because we were, everyone was waiting for our airport to open so they can come back from the U.S. From the US. And then, of course, what, what subsequently happened was that we had to close. And we did not want to make an issue or more difficult for the persons coming back in. And if you remember, the, the number one recommendation that comes from public health around the world during this COVID-19 pandemic is that quarantine is the preferred method, which is also why when we were still on the shutdown, when we had flights coming in from KLM, mm -hmm. that any students returning on KLM would have to pay for their quarantine in the hotel because we were trying to keep in on a very small scale, uh, you know, eliminating, I mean, separating the persons from their family so that we could really just maintain our COVID-19 data. Now, as we are starting to see increased numbers of persons that need to come home, the availability of the hotels is not there or the financing might not be there, for, um, which is more of a factor. So the VSA has relaxed a little bit their measures where they're not requiring you to quarantine at a hotel, but you are required to fill in the health questionnaire online as well as uh, your contact information so that when you come, you will have to go into isolation for 14 days. You will have to go into your house for 14 days to come in. And that was the only way that we could avoid the PCR test. Mm -hmm. So just to put that out there. And those persons will be coming in at what time on Saturday? The, the flight will be arriving, I think it should be in around 1.30 p.m., I believe, because they are departing Fort Lauderdale at 10 a.m., so it's about two, two hours, 45 minutes flight. And the, also, the flight departs from St. Martin at 2.30 p.m. with at least 50 U.S. citizens that have to go back. The US that came via Curacao to St. Martin.
And as we continue now with more news, the three Caribbean countries of the kingdom are still confident that they will be able to conclude an agreement with the Netherlands on a new corona loan. Curaçao, Aruba and St. Martin announced this on Sunday. The loans are taken out to help the islands with the major financial consequences of corona crises. On Monday, July the 6th, Undersecretary Raymond Knops of Kingdom Relations sent a list of conditions for new corona loans. All three islands stated that they did not agree to this because some conditions would run counter to their autonomy. The arrival of the three Prime Ministers to the Kingdom Council of Ministers in The Hague last Friday did not lead to an agreement. Knops had indicated that he wants to consult with the various islands in the near future. The islands also want to consult, but all three set different accents. St. Martin emphasized on Sunday never to agree with a proposal from the Netherlands to set up an entity that makes decisions from the Netherlands about the finances of Curaçao, Aruba and St. Martin. Aruba already seemed close to an agreement with the Netherlands last Friday and says it wants to talk further in the coming days. Because the islands will get into serious financial difficulties without an agreement, Curaçao has been combative in recent days and said never to give up autonomy in exchange for a bag of money. Prime Minister Eugene Ruganath, however, then indicated that he wanted to continue consultations in order to reach an agreement in the interest of the people. The Netherlands has already provided aid to the countries but is imposing a series of conditions on the third aid package for the next three months, which the three islands are not happy about. For example, the islands must implement reforms, something that the Netherlands has been pushing for a very long time. The idea is that the island's economy will become less vulnerable and that they will be better able to deal with the setbacks in the future. The islands consider the Dutch requirements unreasonable and Knop's requirements to agree within four days does not fit in with the way in which the countries in the kingdom interact with each other. In any case, they want more time to implement any reforms. The pain for the islands is the establishment of an institution that will supervise the budget. Meanwhile, the Bishop of uh, Willemstad, Louis Seiko, has sent a letter to Prime Minister Mark Rutte. The Bishop asks Rutte for a personal intervention in the stalemate that arose after the conditions were announced last Monday, which the Netherlands wants to impose on a new corona loan for Curaçao, Aruba and St. Martin. The Bishop hopes that Rutte can help to take a more nuanced path to find a solution. Seiko says that his letter is separate from any political sphere, but that he stands up for the citizens of Curaçao, Aruba, and St. Martin who are suffering from the bad financial situation because of the corona crisis. And now in news from Friends St. Martin. As the French side commemorated Bastille Day 2020 today, July the 14th, several persons in the community were honored and promoted. Senator on French St. Martin, Mr. Guillaume Arnel, also took the opportunity to thank the medical staff at the hospital, the Bethany home, and all in the private fields for their exceptional engagement. On this 2020 Bastille Day celebration, the President Emmanuel Macron has decided to highlight the exceptional engagement of all medical professionals during the COVID-19 pandemic situation. With regards to other countries or nation, we have been extremely fortunate. Nevertheless, it is most normal that in St. Martin, we commend the effort and engagement of the medical staff at the Louis Constant Fleming Hospital at Bethany Home, as well as those in the private fields. Special focus also must be given to our educators, teachers, headmasters, and principals for their exceptional engagement towards our children, thus providing assistance so they may still be successful at the end of the school year. And finally, my congratulations are directed also to all our successful pupils and students. 2020 
has been a very special and difficult year. But we must never forget, always after the rain comes the sunshine. Have a wonderful day. And still to come, director of the NRPB explains the reason why projects are taking so long to be completed. We'll have the details of that story and much more when SSM Daily News returns. GEBE has been faithfully serving the communities of St. Martin, powering your home and our economy. Come rain or shine, our qualified team of professionals are working hard 24 hours a day to provide you and your family with safe, reliable electricity and water. We use the latest technologies and test our products daily to maintain the highest international standards. Our friendly staff is always there to assist you, whether in person, over the phone, or online. We are committed to constantly improving our products and services, making them more efficient, effective, and environmentally friendly to serve you better today and our next generation of clients tomorrow. GEBE, -E, powering a brighter future. Our friend Mega Wadi is here with tips to save you energy. One, turn your air code temperature up. Two, use a ceiling fan instead. Three, buy energy saving products. Save some green with NVGEBE. -E. And as we continue now with more of our series with the director of the National Recovery Program Bureau, Mr. Claret Connor, the director, speaking to our news department recently, addressed the issue of why projects are taking so long to be completed. When you start with a project and you look at a facility or building, similar to the police station, you see it as, okay, there's a roof, there are four windows, three walls, you know, a few electrical and uh, mechanical and technical areas to, to address. And that is the scope, the initial scope. So you establish a terms of reference for, for bidding, and that terms of reference is based on the list, call it a BOQ, bill of quantities, items that has to be um, repaired within a particular structure. And then when you, when you do the technical assessment, and these, the technical people go in after three or four times, and it happens with everything, you begin to see more. And then you begin to, to, un, to, to realize more, because you say, well, listen, the same thing that happened with the roof repair, if, if we are putting back on T111, felt paper, and zinc, it's easy. But if you're saying that we need to reconstruct a roof, that means you have to remove it, right? And if you remove the roof, usually lights and ceiling fans and chandeliers and whatever people may have because these are private homes, right? That is, be going, to, that is going to be affected. So then you, you're not necessarily just removing something and replace it. You have to basically reconstruct. And the same thing happened with the, with the public buildings. When you look at the initial assessment that was made and then the second um, technical assessment that you would use after you, you, put, you put out a bid and then you realize, oh my God, we, we're touching you know, 80%, 70% of actually what has to be done. And if we start to do this, we need to go to the 100%. And we've, we've budgeted $400,000 for one particular area, but that 400,000 now turned into 600,000 or 800,000. You really have to go back to the drawing board and then redesign, re, re, you know, reformat, reevaluate. And, 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 and seek additional funding, even within the trust fund, to get the permission in order for us to continue. So, and you can't, con you can't start until you know how you're going to finish. And as we continue now with more news, the Central Bank of Curacao and St. Martin, the CBCS, looks back on a successful virtual information session for students in Curacao last Thursday, July the 9th, and Wednesday, July the 15th, 2020. The CBCS will provide a similar session for the students of St. Martin. The information session was organized in collaboration with the Stichting Studi Financiering, Curacao, SSC, and the Student Financing St. Martin Division, respectively. The purpose of the information session is to prepare students in various areas for their lives outside of Curacao and St. Martin. The following topics was discussed during the information session information technology, security and integrity, 
payment systems and banking information, and effective use of money. In addition, a student from the previous academic year was also, will also talk about their experience abroad, including in the field of culture change, finance, and study. With these information sessions, CBCS wishes to make a positive contribution to the responsible behavior of young adults on a personal, social, and financial level. For more information about these information sessions, please contact the CBCS by email info at centralbank.cw. Now turning to our weather forecast for July the 14th, 2020, a weak trough approaching the region is expected to increase cloudiness and shower activity during this forecast period. Meanwhile, the concentration of Saharan dust across the region will continue to fluctuate during the next several days. Persons with allergies and or respiratory illnesses should continue taking the necessary precautions. Slight to moderate marine conditions are expected for the next few days. So the outlook through Thursday midday, partly cloudy and hazy with passing showers. Now let's turn to your three-day forecast. And still to come, Kappa strongly condemns the violation of human rights incurred by the Kingdom of the Netherlands. We'll have the details of that story and much more with SXM Daily News Report. Make use of web mobile banking with easy access and direct usage of face recognition. PIN code. Or fingerprint. Download Web Mobile Banking app and make your transaction from anywhere at any time. For more information, visit web-bank.net forward slash quick dash login. And as we continue now with more of SXM Daily News for you this evening, President of the WIFO, Theophilus Thompson, speaking at a press conference last Friday, July the 10th, says that we are now facing a new reality since the government has been forced to implement a new salary package subsidy. Mr. Thompson says that this cut in salary will only bring hardships to persons who have obligations. We are now facing uh, a new reality, and that is since uh, our local government decided to uh, implement what is called a uh, salary uh, package subsidy, many employers, I would say, have misinterpreted or given their own definition to that uh, proposal. Instead of paying the employees their full salaries, they have cut their salaries and based on proposal, they have cut days which actually cut salaries. To cut salaries will be to promote the growth of poverty and bring hardship to persons who has their monthly, uh, bi-weekly, our daily obligation to themselves and their families. We want to tell workers that they should never ever sign any kind of document that will take away their rights to their wages. While we are based on a minimum wage, they should be a living wage. That is based on decent work principle of the International Labour Organization. Uh, with this new entity which is being proposed to be imposed in the Dutch Caribbean, <clears throat> those are violation of uh, the right to self-determination and controlling uh, your affairs even as a colony. 
And the permanent conference of political parties of Latin America and the Caribbean, made up of more than 60 progressive parties from 29 countries, strongly condemned the violation of human rights incurred by the Kingdom of the Netherlands, Holland, for the countries of Aruba, Curaçao, and St. Martin, while demanding that the High Commissioner for Human Rights, Michel Bachelet, send a special mission to document and stop serious abuses of the fundamental rights of citizens of these three countries. Alejandro Moreno Cardenas, president of COPAL, said that in addition to the abuses of the fundamental rights of the citizens of these three states, the gross blackmail of the Kingdom of the Netherlands is added to Aruba, Curaçao, and St. Martin to deliver aid to face the COVID-19 pandemic and mitigate the damage to the economies in exchange for greater interference in the affairs of governments of these three Caribbean islands. He stated that COPA rejects all forms of colonialism in our Latin America and the Caribbean. In the 21st century, any type of colonialism is an embarrassment to humanity, an affront to our region, so we reject new Dutch attempts to return to all forms of domination, the release reads in part. And still to come, paddle transfer carried out for companies in the West. We'll have a detail to that story with SXM Daily News Report. As we end this edition of SXM Daily News for this evening, paddle transfer carried out for a company in the West. The paddle transfer took place from the 33rd rotation company in the West, CIDW, to the 34th rotation by means of a short military ceremony. Commander of CIDW 33, Captain Rubin, has transferred the paddle, thereby assigning her duties as Class Company Commando Lant Forces Company in the Caribbean to Commander CIW, CIDW 34, Captain St. Martin. He and his company will carry out these tasks for four months. The previous rotation has been much more visible on Curaçao in recent months. This was mainly due to the many deployments made in the field of maritime border surveillance, but also surveillance and security missions in this country. Due to the COVID-19 situation on the islands, this rotation did not allow training on Aruba and Bonaire. And with that, viewers, we've come to the end of this edition of SXM Daily News for this evening. I am Valerie Van Putten. Thank you so much for joining me. And just a reminder that this and other programs are available online. Simply log on to stmartinmediacenter.com for viewing. And on behalf of the SXM Daily News team, we thank you for watching and plan on meeting you right back here again tomorrow.